Today we will be learning about clavicle. Clavicle is also known as collarbone. If we look at this skeleton, this is where we are looking at this bone. This is a modified long bone because it lies horizontally. It extends from the sternum towards my shoulder. This is the first bone to ossify in fetal development. And this one is the only long bone which has intramembranous type of ossification. Both the ends of the clavicle, the medial end and the lateral end, they exhibit a very unusual type of a synovial joint and these joints are atypical synovial joints. Now let's look at a disarticulated clavicle bone and look at its salient features. This is an disarticulated right-sided clavicle and you are looking at its two ends. You can see very clearly this end is rounded and this end is flat. And we are looking at from the superior surface of this bone. This is the anterior aspect and that's the posterior aspect. The rounded end, it goes towards the sternum and the flat end, it goes towards the acromial process of the scapula. Now, let's look at the more detailed features of the same clavicle bone. For our convenience, we learn the clavicle in two parts, but they are not equal. We divide it into medial two-third and lateral one-third. What is so particular about the medial two-third? It is like a cylinder and it is convex. How? Anteriorly, the middle two-third is convex and the lateral one-third, it is flat and concave. Both of them anteriorly. So my middle two-third is convex and my lateral one-third is concave. This one is rounded and this one is flat. And now the place where my medial two-third meets with the lateral one-third, that is a place where this bone most commonly get fractured. The two ends of this clavicle bone, they make very strong joints. And these joints are connected by very strong ligaments. And that's the reason once there is a trauma, this clavicle bone usually don't dislocate from either of the ends, rather it fractures. Where? Where is the weakest point? Now let's look at, on this given x-ray, the place you can see, let's highlight the clavicle bone within this x-ray. So let's label it, and now you can see the two ends, where you can see there is the fracture site. And this is exactly what I said before, the medial two-third and lateral one-third, the place where they meet, that is the commonest site where this bone can be fractured. It may be fractured at other sites, but this is the most common site where it can be fractured. Now, let's look at the inferior aspect of the same clavicle. As we have seen previously, the superior surface was smooth because it lines under the skin. But the inferior surface is meant for various attachments. That's why we can see so many impressions which are visible on the undersurface of this clavicle bone. And now look at it on the inferior surface. This end, this is the sternal end and it articulates with the sternum, the manubrium part of the sternum and this, there is a facet. This facet articulates with the acromion process of the scapula. And now look at it, near to the sternal end, 
there is a very prominent impression and that is a location where the costo clavicular ligament get attached and then we can see there's a tubercle here and this tubercle is given the name of conite tubercle it also serves for a ligamentous attachment and then we can see there's a line and this line is known as the trapezoid line now let's look at this model again now we can see here the clavicle bone and this is the sternal end and that is the acromial end and at these both the ends as i said in the beginning there are very unusual type of synovial joints medially at this location this joint is known as sternoclavicular joint and this joint is an atypical synovial joint and if we classify it this joint is a saddle type of joint and this why it is atypical synovial joint because normally the articulating surfaces of the bones who participate in articulation they are lined with hyaline cartilage but here they are lined with the fibro cartilage and there is a disc in between and the other end which is the acromial end of the clavicle and where it is been articulating with the acromion process so this joint is known as acromioclavicular joint and this is also a synovial joint and this is a plain synovial joint but we don't call it a typical synovial joint it is also an atypical synovial joint because the articulating surfaces of the bones are not lined by hyaline type of cartilage rather they are lined by fibro cartilages and these two joints in these two location the clavicle is held so strongly that there is less likely chances of dislocation but more commonly it fractures and we know the site where it fractures so what what is what are the possibilities so let's see this is the site which we have seen the place where my medial two third meets with the lateral one third that is a common fracture site and what happens what are the associated complications if the fracture occurs in this location you can see that just behind that we have this neurovascular bundle and there we have the brachial plexus we have the axillary artery and a vein and these are the structures they are susceptible to be damaged in this type of fracture dislocation is very rare and if it happens it happens at the medial end of the clavicle the posterior dislocation there are fair enough chances that this posteriorly dislocated sternal end of the clavicle might be going to traumatize the carotid sheath and we all know carotid sheath is just posterior to the, to my sternal end of the clavicle and the carotid sheath contains internal jugular vein common carotid artery they are susceptible to be damaged or medially we have the trachea and there are chances but this is a rare clinical condition but the most common condition is the fracture